Hey team, it's your nurse educator Amy here and welcome to part three of my series on ventilator basics for nurses. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the two main types of ventilator alarms that you will see and how to intervene. So let's get started. The two main types of alarms you're gonna see are high pressure and low volume. With high pressure, you may have seen the mnemonic DOPE being used. DOPE stands for dislodgement, obstruction, pneumothorax, and equipment. With dislodgement, what you would see is the tube has shifted out of its normal place. That can absolutely cause a high pressure alarm, which would indicate that not enough oxygen is reaching the patient. And so we would need to intervene. For obstruction, this is anything that is decreasing the lumen of the breathing tube. And if that lumen or the inside of the tube is decreased, that's preventing all of the oxygen from reaching the lungs. So with obstruction, we want to be thinking about things like secretions coating the inside of the tube, um, in, case, in which case we would want to suction the tube to remove those secretions. And then the other common cause of obstruction is the patient biting down on the tube. <laughs> In that case, we may want to increase the amount of sedation that the patient is receiving so that they stop biting and or um, have the RT assist us in placing a bite block to prevent the patient from biting down on that tube. The third main cause of high pressure is a pneumothorax. So if one of the lungs or both are collapsed, that is going to prevent the oxygen from getting down into the lungs and thus causing your high pressure alarm. If you believe that your patient has a pneumothorax, we would want to call our team to intervene quickly so that we can resolve that pneumothorax. The last one refers to equipment. So this would indicate that there is something wrong with the ventilator circuit tubing or the ventilator itself, which is preventing that oxygen from getting into the patient. If you believe that there's an equipment failure, uh, you need to call your RT immediately so that they can help you troubleshoot so that we can resolve the issue. With high pressure alarms, I always recommend starting with the patient in the tube first and working your way over to the ventilator. We always wanna look at the patient first, so if we can see a problem, we can fix it immediately with the patient before working our way over to the ventilator. And your most common cause of a high pressure alarm is obstruction. So remember, think suction and sedation. Our second most common alarm is a low minute volume alarm. And with this alarm, it's very similar to the high pressure alarm, but it's indicating that the minute volume has decreased dramatically in the patient, so they're not getting all of the oxygen that they need. Our most common causes of a low minute volume alarm are disconnection. So with this, you may hear the term popping off the vent. So where the, the circuit tubing becomes disconnected from the actual breathing tube. So we'll see this a lot when we're turning patients. That tubing stretches and comes apart, pops off of the breathing tube. That would absolutely cause a low minute volume alarm. And um, to remedy that, we would reattach the circuit tubing. Extubation. If the patient pulls out their breathing tube or something occurs where the breathing tube comes above the vocal cords, um, that will absolutely cause a low minute volume alarm and we would need to intervene, intervene quickly to restore that oxygen to the lungs. A cuff leak is another common cause of a low minute volume alarm. Um, if the cuff is deflated enough so the air is allowed to pass around the cuff in the, in the vo and, uh, around the vocal cords and the trachea, you will hear a noise. It's usually a It's like a catching sound. And that's the air moving around the cuff in the trachea. That, can, um, that causes some of that air, that tidal volume that's being delivered to the patient to not reach the lungs. So if we hear a cuff leak and we think that that's contributing to a low minute volume alarm, you need to notify your RT and they will assist you in inflating the cuff on the breathing tube. Another common cause of low minute volume alarm is obstruction. And we already talked about that in high pressure alarm. So you would use the same techniques to fix that. Suctioning, 
and or sedation. And then the last cause is a decrease in lung compliance. So this is referring to the ability of the lungs to fully expand and fully deflate. If there's a problem with the lungs ability to fully expand, they're not going to be able to receive all of that oxygen that they need. We see this a lot in patients that have disease processes such as COPD, COVID, ARDS. The lungs just aren't able to fully expand and deflate. And so that can absolutely cause a decrease in your minute volume. If you feel that that is the cause for your low minute volume, you need to talk with your RT and your provider and work together to figure out how to fix the problem. So that was part three of my series. Stay tuned for part four. Be sure to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss any more of my videos. Until next time, stay safe and smart at the bedside. I'll see you in the next one.